San Francisco, now the latest city to crack down on gas appliances. I said stoves earlier, and I was mistaken. That is New York. San Francisco is some other gas appliances. New regulations will require now furnaces and water heaters to be electric by 2027 as part of the city's green energy agenda. Joining us now, Kennedy host Kennedy herself. I thought we had this behind us. No. Sorry. Hi, Taylor. <laughs> I'm over you. here. Yeah. Yes, Hi. you are. You're up. Yeah, my eyes are up It's here. you. <laughs> um, so... I have a house in California. I love California. These rules are so ridiculous. It is, it's just another reason to move out of the state. Do you know how long it's going to take to heat a water tank with electric? Gas is mm. fast. Gas is better. Gas is what people are used to. We are sick of being punished like we are being forced to live in a third world country. Who knows if these things will make any difference at all? You know, we, we run the California grid on clean natural gas for the most part. Some mm. renewables, but there's not enough. It's right. not plentiful enough. So stop punishing fossil fuels until we get there. There is a ways away. And that's that's where the difference is. Yes. Where is there? It is over there. It's not here there. <laughs> well said. You got that one? Yep. I got that. That's a good one. Yeah. I'm um, awake, Brian. So so California, we're gonna stick in California this whole block because it's so fascinating. Ga Governor <laughs> Gavin Newsom says the state will spend $30 million to build 1,200 tiny homes for the homeless starting this fall. I just want to add this, Kendi. So I was doing a little research on this. These tiny homes have electricity. Yep. They don't have any running water. Mm -hmm. They don't have bathrooms. Uh, well, Brian, you know, it's like now you so are tell me, so that, how is, so lot. tell me, like, that, that makes sense. No, it's, uh, I think they can plumb a tiny home. I mean, you certainly save money. Uh, with plumbing and, and not having to have a sewer line going to the tiny home, it's it's going to smell a lot worse. Yeah, and it's it is they're cute. I love the the tiny home villages. Oh yeah, for sure. I think they're lovely. It's certainly a, a better, more permanent housing solution than tents in Portland, as you mm. know, which is not in the state of California. The activists <laughs> are giving out tents, mm. keeping people on the right. very bottom of the rung, not actually helping them uh, succeed and heal. So uh, the tiny homes are great. The the homes that they have been building in California about six hundred and fifty thousand dollars per home. And they, they wow. barely started construction on those. They, they have about 5% of what they have promised the electorate who keeps voting for these homeless initiatives. And mm -hmm. the state is spending so much money with so few results that at some point they have to kick these buffoons well, out and of and I just, it gets In a back. tiny home, they can all live together like a clown car and just go away. But I mean, think, think about it. No plumbing, no water. You can't cook there. So you put somebody in a home, but you've... And you made this point. California doesn't give people the means to build their own life. Mm -hmm. Right. They want to yeah. put people in a Neither home. Neither does New York, by the way. In New York. So it, it's so much money. But the worst part is it doesn't empower people no. to actually build a life in California. It's just we want to get you off the street. So so go live in one of these. Yeah. And there, there are obviously different types of homeless people in right. California. Uh, there are people who are a paycheck away from being evicted and being on the street. Those people, they need apartment buildings. Yeah. Most of the state is not zoned for for multifamily dwellings. Thank you. More than anything, that is what they need. There are so many, it is so overregulated, yeah. the real estate in California, that it is impossible for the market to deliver what people actually need. Okay, I know you're passionate about that, but now this. Mm -hmm. A proposed <laughs> law in California could ban additives used in popular candies, including Skittles, Sour Patch Kids, Pez, and Jelly Beans, because the ingredients have been linked to cancer. Now, let me ask you this. I had cancer, as you know. I did eat some of these things growing up, but I don't think they caused my cancer. Um, I imagine you'd have to eat vats of this kind of candy uh, to get sick, and, and I really don't think that the government should be telling you what to eat or what not to do. Are we no, going to just remove sugar also completely from people's and, diets? And, and let's not assume that that the lawmakers know enough about this to claim its causation. There may be a correlation. Like, certainly, mm. we should be doing a better job of what we put into our bodies mm -hmm. as individuals making our own choices. Anytime the government starts making those choices for you, they are taking away freedom. Why are they doing that? Because they're paying for your health care. And this is one of the big right. warnings with socialized mm -hmm. medicine. The more government has a stake mm -hmm. in the outcome, the yep. more they are going to make sure they regulate what is going in. Yeah. Instead of getting wow. to the root of the problem, talking the big food companies mm -hmm. producing, frankly, the crap that we all eat and the sugar that's all in there. And parents that would, would buy be... 
more Maybe garbage for their kids if they knew that it was safer food coloring and fewer additives and, and fewer toxic ingredients and toxic, by the way, a blanket word that sometimes means nothing. It reminds me of the debate over large size sodas here in New York when someone who shall remain nameless wanted to ban those sodas. And I would always say the, the issue really is not banning the sodas. It's teaching kids how to be more proactive about their health care and realize that maybe soda isn't something you drink every day. Yes, that kind but, of thing. but fitness and nutrition, as we know, are racist. So you can't engage in those conversations. Right. So is math and philosophy and organizing. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll leave We've it got there. a philosopher right here, by the way. I bet people don't know that. I mean, I wouldn't go that far, but I am a fan <laughs> of the sport. The Socrates of Fox Business on set with us. <laughs> um, thank you so much for being here. Great and to I love see your you. because I feel Patrick's like we're complimenting we each are. other here. Absolutely. And do not forget to watch Kennedy Monday through Thursday, Fox Business. It all happens 7 p.m. Eastern.